welcome back again. So, to the Dark Research Institute for Fundamental Sciences, as part of this outreach program, organizes scientific Turkey public lecture series to share the passion for science and technology with wide audience and to foster scientific curiosity and excitement in the society. As part of this lecture series, Professor uh, Sao Danata has kindly agreed to give public lecture using this school. Uh, data-driven methods, impacts of data-driven methods on technology. With this, I want to invite Professor Sao Danata to the stage to begin this talk. I am sure he will give a great talk. Please be welcome. Okay, thank you for kind introduction. And uh, it's my great pleasure to give a talk here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, impact of data driven methods. This I have already shown that we are already in a, a new era of data-centric uh, material science. We are in the fourth paradigm. <coughs> the, probably if you hear about the use of AI, you uh, found something called chat GPT is quite useful. And probably some of you as a student already use that to write down some reports instead of yourself. And uh, it is quite useful, it's true. <clears throat> the, um, of course, uh, senior researchers think ah, this is use useless, or sometimes producing too much fake. But, uh, uh, well, I have some mixed opinion. And in conclusion, uh, I think that algorithm or theory behind that is already very well made. The only thing which is lacking is data. I will show some example. I asked uh, <coughs> ChatGPT, what is the kind of version of ChatGPT? This is very simple answer. The ChatGPT is 3.5. <coughs> I asked again ChatGPT, please suggest any chemical relevant for new inorganic crystal. And the answer was, uh, well, he said some garlic sodium nitride. And he also showed some of he or C, I I don't know. Uh, uh, it uh, suggested some synthesis condition, etc. And uh, well, I was quite uncomfortable as a data scientist. This is something uh, not really uh, realistic. So I asked another question. I do not think carbon cell nitride is likely. Can you suggest something different? And uh, the answer was, of course. Here are a few more hypothetical chemical compression of new organic crystal, lantern, and boron 2O, couple FP3, and many others. The drawing material, I cannot judge whether they are really useful or not. Uh, it's difficult to say it's a fake or not, but uh, they suggest something. <clears throat> and the other question I asked was, among new compounds you suggested, which one showed the best thermoelectric property? And the answer was quite honest. I do not have access to real-time data or the ability to predict the property of hypothetical compounds. So I cannot provide specific information about the electric property of the compound. No, it's, it's uh, very honest. If you are interested in exploring some electric property of a specific compound, you might need to consult research literature, scientific database of material economics tools that provide data and prediction related to material properties. Yeah, it is what 
free grain. So, uh, for example, when chat GPT is not only producing fake, but uh, well, sometimes it's quite uh, useful or sometimes quite honest. But uh, we realize that it's true that we need data. So this is also I have shown before, but uh, there are several databases available. In the morning of today's lecture, I talked mainly about first principles calculation, but uh, here I will talk a little bit about first principle calculation again based on harmonic uh, problem calculation, but the rest of the time I will talk about uh, using of this type of database, experimental database. <coughs> yeah. So we have a long history of first principles calculation, and now we can get some information and also database can be constructed. The, in the chapter one now, I will talk about discovery of new low thermal conductivity materials uh, using first principles of harmonic lattice dynamics calculation and Bayesian optimization. The uh, people who was who were involved in this uh, study was those people. Uh, Mainly this uh, Seppo and uh, Seppo. <laughs> so this is also uh, the figure I have shown before. Uh, this is the experimental lattice conductivity for a number of different systems. And the diamond has the highest thermal conductivity, and it shows 2,000 in the unit of watt per meter Kelvin at room temperature. <coughs> the window glass or SiO2 has a very low thermal conductivity, which is lower by a factor of 1,000 or even lower. The, uh, our motivation was to find out some ultra low thermal conductivity material, which is much lower than SiO2, in the level much lower than SiO2, if it it exists with n uh, project database which contained at that time uh, 55,000 crystals. So we use that database and we use our semiconductivity calculation result as a database and to search something new. So probably you know that the uh, some electric materials are very important, especially these days, the global warming is a really important issue. And in Japan, in Osaka, in Kyoto, uh, we are living. Every day, the highest temperature exceeds 37 degrees C. So even uh, staying in a room, uh, our temperature exceeds our blood temperature, so it's really serious. And I don't think it is only due to global warming, but uh, of course global warming is uh, really uh, making that kind of trouble. And uh, this, uh, to solve a part of that problem, um, we need to utilize some kind of uh, uh, some electric material which can really convert uh, the waste heat to the electricity. And the performance of some electric material is given by, as a, this ZT value. And here, the thermal conductivity is located. So if you can decrease the thermal conductivity, it means there is a possibility to increase this figure value. Of course, uh, uh, the simple calculation shows uh, that if we decrease the thermal conductivity by a factor of 10, we can increase the figure of merit by a factor of 10. But of course, things are not that simple. But at least it is worthwhile to search some new material. The origin of uh, thermal conductivity or thermal resistivity is also explained in the morning. That is a common common scattering. So how many common do not interact? But if there is a from a scattering occur, then it can produce some resistivity. 
So we need to compute from, from scatter. And uh, Professor Togo um, made this from a three type program, and it is useful for a variety of questions. <coughs> this is the result. Of, this is also, I have shown in the final, uh, as a final slide in the morning session. And uh, this is a uh, FTC the lattice uh, conductivity. Lattice uh, conductivity is called FTC as 300 Kelvin. The, the horizontal axis experimental data, the vertical axis is a pretty result. And the most of them are on this diagonal line. And the, well, the experimental semiconductivity data are not always correct. And uh, there are wider, wide scattering uh, among experimental data. So we believe that at least uh, the, our, ex, uh, our calculation is reliable whose accuracy are compelled to experiment. So we take that data as a starting point. The only problem of this type of calculation was uh, this we need to compute all phono-phono scattering. So it is uh, to a three order magnitude more expensive calculation than the simple phono calculation. It is very expensive calculation. The computational cost was something like one day for one crystal with 104 PC. 104 PC is we can make it uh, the already uh, many cores on the uh, CPU. So you do not have to put so many PCs in parallel. So this is not a big supercomputer, but still it is, takes uh, quite a long time, uh, one day. So if you want to compute uh, millions of concerns, you need a long time to do that. So we cannot do exhaustive search over all different crystals. Instead, we need to use some kind of a synthetic technique for artificial intelligence. Before that, <coughs> uh, there is a physical model of the sun conductivity. Uh, uh, Slack proposed a model for the sum of conductivity and based on his uh, analysis and the mass volume divided by the nitrogen content. They, are, they create some rules. Actually, we computed this quantity based on the Slack model and also the by temperature and green nitrogen parameters were obtained by our own and uh, it's true that the many of data are on this diagonal line. It means SAP model is no bad. It is quite good. But at the same time, there are some outliers uh, which do not follow this diagonal line. Since we are interested in uh, uh, proposing some new compound which shows low thermal conductivity, it means we are interested in this zone. We are not interested in those materials, but uh, other than that, we are interested in these outriders. So in order to predict those outriders, you can understand this type of uh, model is not very useful. We have to do something different. So that is based on the center. So these outliers cannot be found just by model based on harmonic form. This model is based on harmonic form. But we have to seriously take it on unharmonious. Okay, so this is the so-called virtual screen. We have some initial data. Actually, we got uh, uh, we did uh, some conductivity calculation for 100 crystals. And we use some model and predictors or features whatever to have some kind of uh, estimate based on a similar model. And uh, to go through a library data which contains 5,500 uh, uh, 5, of crystal in the library, to go through that with this model and predictor without 
making any first principles conclusion in this stage to pick up some of the candidate. And uh, this process is very important because uh, this uh, screening does not use any of the first principles result, just by using some of the model and predictors. So this candidate are not necessarily correct answers, but uh, they can be candidate, and uh, we took, uh, we made validation because this model is not necessarily uh, good. Uh, sometimes it is uh, validation without fail. Then. Uh, we put this uh, result to the, this uh, model again and uh, improve the model and go through the library again. So the model can be iteratively improved. This process is called Bayesian optimization. And uh, even when we make uh, uh, this cycle for 100 times, 100 model and 100 cycle of uh, iterations, you need only 200 times of the uh, uh, first principle calculation. It is much uh, more efficient than exhaustive search of all uh, compounds in the library. So we took this strategy. So in order to make this uh, uh, assembly model, we need model and predictors or features. As a descriptors, we can make, we can choose many different kinds of descriptors, elemental descriptors, descriptors, structure descriptors, and so on. But uh, at the very beginning, uh, we tried the most simple uh, descriptors for element, uh, that uh, element or compound. That is one is volume, the other is density. Of course, uh, if we plot the volume versus, uh, uh, volume is crystalline volume, uh, versus lattice thermal conductivity, the equation is not so good. The equation factor is minus 0.6, the equation is quite bad. The, uh, many people may think that, but uh, if the equation is so bad, it is not useful. The correlation here is much worse. It's almost uh, no correlation. But then anyway, we use them as a parameter, as a uh, feature. And on top of that, we use a very simple or simplest uh, elemental features uh, uh, for the uh, constituent uh, atoms. That is. Uh, Elements. So, if, uh, for example, if we treat lithium hydride, we put uh, hydrogen one, lithium one, the rest of the element will be zero. This is a so called one half ex expression of the uh, elemental features. So, in that way, we can simply, uh, very simply, include the elemental features. So, altogether, here is two variables, and here are 34 uh, elemental descriptors. So altogether, there are 36 features. And we put these 36 features in the vertical axis. Also, it looks like a one dimension, but it is actually 36 dimension. And uh, the vertical axis corresponds to the output. In this case, uh, this is the lattice conductivity. As a model, we took so-called Gaussian process regression. And with a Gaussian process regression, we can make if there is some observed result. Observation, in this case, is a computed result. The computed result here and there. Then this regression can make this type of regression uh, result uh, model. Not only this prediction, but also the name Gaussian coming from the inclusion of error associated with the prediction. So if the 
uh, the location in uh, this uh, feature space is very close to the observed result, then we can expect smaller error. If this is far from the observed one, it is, the error is expected to be much larger. So all the errors are expressed by the Gaussian distribution. So this is a kind of 95% confidence interval. So of course, when it is uh, computed, then uh, the predictive result has no error. So in that way, we can make model prediction. So based on that, uh, here this is Gaussian distribution, and uh, the term here is expressed like this, and we call that z score. The z score can provide what is the probability to exceed this difference value. In this case, we take some example, for example, the lowest known material uh, for the LTC, that is semiconductivity. If it is lower than uh, this uh, <coughs> predicted one, is lower than this difference one, then this quadrant is higher. Or if the error is smaller, then again this quadrant is higher. So you can see that. Uh, this is the distribution. If the, uh, the middle of this distribution is the same as the difference value, z equals zero. The with increase of this mean value, of course, z increase. But uh, with the decrease of the error, again, z increase. So in that way, we can uh, predict the probability of uh, exceeding this difference value according to this z value. This is uh, really uh, some data scientific approach. And the physicist or uh, material scientist originally did not think in that way. They always think, or we always thought, that there is some definite predictive value, and we do not use a concept of probability. But the probability is quite often used in data science. For example, look at the weather forecast. The tomorrow in uh, uh, this place will be good weather with a probability of 80% or 50%, 20%. They are all prediction and not definitely determined, but just based on prediction. But uh, we can predict. So based on that model z-score, uh, this is a predictive value of the uh, logarithmic of the lattice thermal conductivity with minus here. So the higher this score, it corresponds to the low predicted lattice thermal conductivity. I'm sorry for very small, tiny characters, but uh, I don't intend to show all of them. But, uh, this is the top 100 compound showing quite high Z score. And uh, well, there are altogether 55,000, and just 100 of them are shown here. So just uh, let me show only the top 10 of them. It's shown here, uh, top 8 of them. And uh, there are from first ranking to the number 8. The, it shows quite high Z scores. The, the chemical formula and the space group are shown here. And uh, of course, they are based on a very simple model using that one hot expression of error and uh, volume and uh, density, which is not, it doesn't have good correlation with uh, uh, <coughs> the Rathesum uh, conductivity. So, our intention at the beginning was to put all these data into the Bayesian optimization to improve our model. So in order to do that, we did first principles of the external conductivity for these compounds. Well, by the way, this number six is missing here. It is not by error. This is 
quite complicated crystal, and uh, at that time our computer cannot handle that crystal uh, uh, in a like, uh, time. So it was just only. So we did uh, all these uh, seven calculations for our candidate and found that they are really not bad. Remember that we were interested in uh, uh, finding crystals which has lower thermal conductivity than the current one. It is something like one window glass is one watt per meter Kelvin. So the first one already uh, attained 0.1 watt per meter Kelvin, of course by cerebral calculation. But uh, well, they are not bad. Actually, they are quite good. So. Uh, it means it is not necessary to do the Bayesianization to find out something new. This is already good enough. The structure is look like that. And the good thing is they, they are already uh, once synthesized and uh, 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 crystal structure are known. So uh, this is not a dream, but uh, this is just uh, can be experimentally confirmed. But as a thermal electric application, uh, we worried somehow about the band gap because the band gap for this material quite high. And uh, it may not be useful for the thermal electric material, which should show good electric conductivity. So uh, we have all risk of 55,000 compounds and found that at the ranking number 101, one, the, this compound, which has quite reasonable uh, lattice thermal conductivity with quite narrow band gap. And that uh, this ranking, this is the one. So they may be a good candidate for lattice thermal uh, thermal electric applications. Actually, uh, our Korean colleague uh, collaborated, tried to uh, synthesize that and try to measure property, but unfortunately, those materials are not very stable in uh, uh, air, so uh, they were not able to measure some properties. But uh, this is a kind of method which can use uh, theoretical result to uh, use machine learning technique to find out something new. This is structures. Okay. So this is what we use the theoretical result from uh, our center. This, in the chapter two, we use uh, ICSD database to find out some new compound. Here, I need to explain two terms. One is recommender system. The other is chemically relevant. So let me explain one by one. <coughs> so the database we use is ICSD data. So recommender system. This is uh, something you every day encounter whenever you uh, use uh, smartphone or whatever uh, in the day to day life. If you buy some something this is something useful for Turkish people. The, you buy something here. Whenever you buy something there, they always recommend you to buy that you buy something different. This is book. If you buy this book, uh, they think that you are also interested in buying this book. If you buy some plants, then they then recommend you to buy some hat together. In that way, they make pinpoint advertisement to you. It is much better, much more efficient than just putting a advertisement on TV or on the wall, big wall, a big paper, or in a journal or magazine or whatever. It is not pinpoint, and it is not that efficient. Pinpoint advertisement is very useful, and I'm sure it the many of the e-commerce is using that. That is the uh, 
recommend us this in, in uh, data science terminology. So we use this technique. So let me explain what is chemically relevant approach. If you look at this type of databases, for example, in the pseudo-binary oxide or pseudo-binary uh, compound, you may find this type of compound with a compression 14, 18, 614, 212, and nothing else. Now, when you perform first principles calculations, you can find that those compounds are on the convex half. This was already explained in the morning session. Uh, if you look at the material project database, they have also this kind of complex half. And here, also, if we did uh, uh, as principal calculation, the formation energy are on the complex half. So they are thermodynamically stable Some other compression like uh, 10, 3, 8, 6, 5, 8 are not on the complex half. And, uh, they are probably not CRC. And uh, there is uh, no easy uh, expression why 1418 is on the convex side and they are CRC and 1038 are not. They may be some kind of magic number or some other uh, logic speed. But before uh, finding the type of logics, just let the computer think about that. So uh, this is a CRC in our definition. The, the traditional way to discover new compound are done uh, in the following way. If there is a, this type of compound in registered uh, in a database, they just use a concept of similarity, like group electronegativity or aniquilities. If the electronegativity of this element A is very similar to this element P, they uh, guessed that this is, although it is not yet reported, they can uh, expect that this theory is also existed. In that way, people worked uh, for a long time, and uh, for more than 100 years. And uh, in that way, no one can did some success to find out some new problem. And we simply extended that approach, similarity approach, that they're using the data uh, scientific techniques. Instead of using just one parameter like ionic radius or electronegativities, we used many different uh, variables. Here I have shown on the feature number one and feature number two, as I remember, feature like ionic radius and electronegativity. But actually, uh, as I will show later, uh, our uh, dimension here is 500. It is not possible to be shown on this slide, 500 space, but uh, uh, it can be uh, made on computers. And uh, uh, we have data in ICSD. And if the data is available, uh, data is registered, then compound ICSD registered compound are properly like that. The others are made in this grid, grid point. They are uh, mostly ICSD, not registered uh, compound. But uh, there are many possibilities for non-registered uh, point. This can be non-CRC or just unexperimented chemical uh, composition. Or Somebody did the experiment, but uh, in a sense it was difficult to deform, like the material which you really need, really high pressure synthesis, or sometimes a really special technique, chemical technique to synthesize that. 
there are many other possibilities. So this uh, grid point uh, without any data need not to be uh, non-CRC, but uh, something different. So th at the very beginning, we use this red data as a score one, and the other point as a score zero. And we use binary classification technique. Binary classification technique is very simple. If you have this type of uh, blue and red coming like this, there are many different ways for uh, to make the red zone and blue zone, something in between. This is uh, uh, called classifiers, and uh, depending on the choice of classifiers, the result are sometimes totally different. This is very precise, but sometimes it is too much fitting to this uh, distribution. And uh, some of the linear and or some other, there are many different. But there is no logic behind these models. They are all models. This kind of thing is described in the data science textbook or uh, cited, this was obtained from cited burn documentation. Cited burn is a very well made uh, database for any different kind of uh, this type of models. In the data Same that there is no logic. If the result is good, then it is a good one. Again, if you think of the uh, weather forecast, depending on the data from many different uh, positions, they predict the moral weather. There is no much logic. I, I should not say it is no logic, but there is no much logic. But if some model predict better than the others, they consider the, that model is a good model. So we have tested everything. And found out some models like logistic uh, uh, regression of gravity in the London Forest performed quite nicely. So uh, for that purpose, we use uh, the initial data set, 33,000 ICST registered compound, ionic compression. And uh, our search space was something like 1.8 million of uh, chemist, uh, chemical compression composer of uh, these elements. The, for the elemental features, there are many different possibilities. If you look at this type of periodic table, uh, but in a wall, as a wallpaper, uh, there are many small uh, quantities or numbers on the uh, corresponding to the each element. There are sometimes intrinsic quantity of elements like atomic number, atomic mass, or heuristic quantities like uh, foreign negativity, Allen's electronegativity, S prime, radius, and so on. The physical property of elemental substances are sometimes a melting point of element, boiling point of element, something like that. Of course, 
you may worry that well, polymer permeability and allergic permeability, they are mostly similar. But the, the data scientist knows how to avoid that kind of overfitting. So they normally use whatever we can use. So we use all of them. If it is not really necessary, they just avoid it automatically. Together with these 22 elemental features, we use uh, uh, some compound representation. If the compound is AB in the feature space, uh, A and B are like this. And we take average value skewness uh, and covariance as a compound representation. And this compound is made in the same way. So in that way, we end up with something like 500 elemental features. So we made 500 dimensional space, feature space. OK, this is already the uh, result of validation. The, uh, by the way, we use the ICSD data as a training data. And we need to validate the result, whether the result is correct or not. In order to validate the result, we need a kind of test set. And for the test set, we use the other database called ICDD. And there is a significant overlap between the ICSD data and the ICDD data. But we just removed the overlap part uh, from here. And just to use this yellow part for the training data, and the rest of the ICDD part as a training data. So there is no overlap between ICSD and ICDD. So we counted the number of compounds included in the test set as the number of correct answers, which is shown in this vertical axis number of compounds included in ICSD. Horizontal access corresponds to the ranking of the predicted probability from the first rank number one to number 20,000 within uh, 1.8 million of different compositions. And as you can see, the London Forest performed uh, best among these three models. And uh, with the decrease of ranking, this, this is a cumulative number. So the number of correct uh, answers somehow declined. But uh, it is very good in the very first term. So the gradient of this curve corresponds to the number of compounds we found within each of the bin. Uh, so this, the first correspond to the top 1,000 compounds. Among these top 1,000 chemical compositions, we found 180 among the top 1,000 as a correct answer. So success rate of finding uh, compound or correct answer was 18%. This is 60 times higher than the random search. Random search can produce just 0.29%. This is quite low and this is quite high. So this is quite successful and uh, we thought it is um, more or less good enough to show to the experimenter. And actually, it is very difficult to show to the experimentalist, but we made some way to show that. And uh, this is just blinking uh, reds or blue uh, stars, but uh, this is a pseudo tunnelly compound. So three compound, and uh, this compound and member is changing. And depending on the com uh, combination of this uh, compound, the position of uh, the uh, recommended uh, chemical composition, recommended CRC is changing. Sometimes you can see some red 
uh, uh, stars, uh, and it is a uh, very good candidate for the non, uh, uh, new uh, CRC. So when we show this type of result to experimenters, some of them are interested. The one of them are Professor Kano, who is uh, very good in uh, producing lithium battery materials. And he actually made uh, very good uh, all solid state lithium and battery uh, with Toyota motors. <coughs> now they are looking for some oxide material which shows very good lithium uh, conductivity. For that purpose, they need a good model system which shows new structure. We gave them some of the candidates for the new CRC, and the uh, young professor actually synthesized uh, those pinpoint uh, synthesis of new compounds and found that uh, at this composition, uh, he found uh, this compound, which is completely new compound. And after finding this uh, compound, uh, they are trying to modify this by uh, doping of different kinds of material, which is, uh, they are very good at doing that type of system, uh, that type of uh, modification. And also in this sugar panel, they found some different so in, in that way, uh, our computation really motivated experimenters to do something uh, pinpoint uh, synthesis, similar to pinpoint advertisement by e-commerce. The other one is uh, uh, actually the discovery of nova nitride. This is aluminum nitride, lanthanum nitride, uh, silicon nitride. Uh, Pseudo ternary, and then we proposed uh, some uh, compositions. And they did pinpoint synthesis and actually discovered for as yet unknown nitride and oxynitride. This is still a tiny crystal, but uh, uh, they already succeeded to uh, make the analysis, crystal structure analysis, chemical analysis, and so on. Okay, so oh, this is the end of my talk. Uh, well, this in this way, uh, we use the commander system to based on the uh, uh, database existing in the ICST, trying to find something new. And then in the first part, uh, I use the theoretical chart. In the second part, uh, we use. Uh, Database. But both of the uh, method we simply use algorithms that are already existed in the uh, uh, information technology or data science. So for the algorithm, it is not new. And in other words, algorithm is already existing. The only thing we need to uh, apply is the data. If there is a sufficient data, if we give sufficient data to chat GPT, chat GPT can immediately give you a correct answer. So that is the end of my talk. Thank you. Said that uh, you you also tried elemental uh, properties, uh, elemental features. Did you also try bandcap? At the end, uh, you are combining uh, your results with bandcap. That's all I must. Oh, uh, 
Well, we didn't uh, try to combine the band uh, gap for the, the search in the semi-symmetry. This is everything we did. But uh, we also made, uh, because this model was too simple, so we tried to improve our model. And uh, actually, we succeeded to make better model than this one. Of course, this is too simple. And actually, the error by the, uh, we also estimated the error by this model and by the other model. The other model uses much more emitter feature than this one. And the result is uh, the error was much better, uh, something like, uh, <coughs> here the error um, uh, by previous model was something like uh, this amount, like uh, 0.5 in the logarithm scale. But if we improve the model, it becomes 0.1. So it's five times smaller error. But we realize that to use this type of model, we do not need such a precise model. Because we want to find something new in this region. So what we need to do is uh, just a prediction of this area, not that. And uh, to distinguish that crystal with that one, we do not need much precise model. Anyway, we will compute the semiconductor afterwards. So for model, we do not. So for that purpose, we realize that the use of the simple model is better for this purpose. So depending on the purpose, if you really want to compute the thermal conductivity without computing any perspective calibration, then you need a good model. But here, just to distinguish different uh, uh, crystal, we do not. So depending on the purpose, we have to choose. And uh, that is probably necessary to uh, think before the study. But we understood that after we did everything. So. More questions? I'm actually I'm from Boston University. I'm also doing some kind of this kind of data mining and machine learning research on battery materials. But I think it may, in my experience, my main problem was uh, the experimental part. When we measure some, uh, some properties, some uh, characteristics of a material, different labs may end up with different results depending on the technique, depending on their, I don't know, their testing conditions. So how you deal with these kind of differences in the measured variables, even if the materials are the same. Maybe the material characterization, maybe material status is um, maybe different. That will end, that will end up very different results. I also have many, I have this problem and I am getting difficulty and uh, by dealing with these kind of problems. For example, you said there are two different databases, for enamel databases, and you said there are over, overlapping regions. How similar were these? Uh, well, uh, I, I talk actually with you, the experimental data is very much, we have to be very much worried about the how they did that experiment. And uh, depending on the experimental condition, the results are sometimes quite different. And for these crystal structures and this ICSD database, they examine what the database producers examine many different researchers and the most general data. So it is quite useful. But the, for the other data, property data and so on, it's very much scattered. So my conclusion is that it's probably better not to rely too much on the literature data, but to do or to design some measurement system uh, by myself or by the other people who uh, systematically produce the uh, experimental data under the same condition. Otherwise, if the data, this data is from this group and the other data from the other group, they are not always comparable. 
sometimes comparable, but we always have to work. So I think that is important when the number of data is very small, if it is uh, 100 or 1,000. If the number of data is huge, like millions or billions, like in e-commerce, then if there is some noise or something, it can be ignored. But uh, if we handle only small data, then we have to worry about the quality of data. And the experimental data are not always that kind of quality, in my opinion. More question, please. First of all, I should uh, say that it's useful to propose some new composition, not uh, to discover. It's, if we really want to discover, we have to do experiment uh, to really confirm that this prediction is useful or not. So we are not discovering something. So we, I sometimes use the term discover. But anyway, we proposed uh, some of the candidates. And uh, basically, this method is used for not only for prediction of the new compound, but for many other purposes. But always the uh, quality and quantity of data. The, if the data is not sufficient, if you want to predict some material with good property, you need some property data. Otherwise, it's possible as the chance you can ask. It's all depends on data. Thank you. One more question. What is the computational cost for the latest tertiary phase uh, experiment? And your competition? You mean the computational cost for the experiment? versus the uh, computation. Computational cost of the estimations. Well, computational cost is here is one day uh, walk clock time using this computer. So it, it's a high performance computer. No, no. Just 100 core PC and uh, probably you have the ordinary PC has uh, 16 or sometimes 32 cores. So it's just uh, well, depending on when at that time, probably we use eight core PC, so we power, made power uh, uh, PCs. But now you have many more cores on one PC, and that can be done by, by cheap GPU. Mm, well, GPU can also be used, but at that time we didn't use the GPU. So it's, uh, computational cost is not that much as compared with the experimental experiment. It's very expensive. This is relatively cheap. Even for single PC, even using this type of PC, it takes 100 days. <laughs>